Hello everyone. Today we are going to discuss topic from the course algorithm from the first unit introduction. For our discussion, we have taken asymptotic notations and their definition. So, what do you mean by notation? See, when you look at this picture, you will tell that the first pink color represents a female and the blue color represents a male. And again, these are all the familiar notations to represent your logic gates. So, when you look at the notation, you will know what was the idea behind that. In the same way, we are going to discuss three asymptotic notations uh, generally used to represent your time complexity of an algorithm. The very first is omega. This represents the best case. What do you mean by best case? What was the minimum amount of time that the algorithm will take to run the given input as your best case? Then worst case. For worst case, we use big O notation. The worst case tells you what was the maximum amount of time that the algorithm might take to run your given input. Now, theta gives you a time bound between your best and worst. Then, analysis framework. See, when I want to analyze an algorithm, what are all the factors or parameters I want to consider? I need a way to measure my input size, right? So, we are going to consider a parameter n which will tell the input size for the algorithm. You know already for an algorithm, you need an input. It will generate an output and you will have a series of steps that transform your input to output. Now, this operation or the series of steps determines how the input size has to be measured. See, in your sorting application, the input size is nothing but the number of elements. For example, if I want to sort elements in an array, then the n is nothing but number of elements in an array. In a spell checking algorithm, if I want to find the spell check for a word, then n is nothing but number of words that the word, number of characters that the word present is my input size. In primality of a positive number n, now my input size is the value taken by n. Here I want to process only a single value n. Now what value my n is going to take will determine the input size. After deciding my input size, how do I measure my runtime? Normally we will think that I, will, I have to measure my runtime as seconds or milliseconds. The issue is that if you do a measurement in that way, then the measurement depends on the computer, arch the architecture of the computer in which the algorithm is being executed. But I want an independent one. Then I go for the counter. I just count the number of times my algorithm operation has to be executed. Do What kind of operation do I need to consider for that? That is the basic operation. Normally, your basic operations are the one that will take maximum amount of time to when your algorithm runs up. So, based on that, the time taken by an algorithm to execute T of N depends on execution time of an algorithm's basic operation and number of times that this operation need to be executed. Our focus will be mainly on how we count the time, number of time that the operation has to be executed. We will not focus much on the execution time of basic operation. We will find out why. So look at these questions. If I want to find how faster my algorithm will run on a machine that is 10 times faster than the one that I have considered. It is so simple. If I assume that the count as 1, then it is direct multiplication of now the times. If my second question is, how much longer will the algorithm run if we double its input size? Here the count is given as half n n minus 1. Let me simplify this equation. On simplification, I get value as half n square. Now let us apply the formula to find what, what could be the time taken. See, I have, I want to, this is what given t of n. I want to find it for t of 2n, double of my input size. So, replace this n with 2n value. On replacing, so you will get the value as 4. 
here this multiplicative constant half would be cancelled out see here you you need not to worry about the value what will be taken by your basic operation because they are cancelled out what is our inference from that is you can ignore your multiplicative constant and concentrate on the counts order of growth what do you mean by counts order of growth how fast or in which order your algorithms running time is getting increased as your count get increases that is what the basic idea let us look at the order of growth we generally know when your input size increases uh, the, your complexity will also increase but in which order it increases help us to compare algorithms and understand their scalability for that we have taken three different examples in the first example i have tried to print the very first element of my array see here my array size could be of any it could be of 5 it could be of 4 it could be of 3 or it could be of any size but always the operation is it has to print the very first element so it is constant of 1 and it is highly independent of the input size next consider your linear time here i want instead of printing the first element in my previous example i want to print all the elements in the array so it you can understand it is directly dependent on the number of elements in my array if my array size is 5 then then i want to, the count that i want to perform this basic operation is 5 so it is linearly proportional to my input size then comes your quadratic time here i want to print it as a pair if suppose my array has only one element that is 1 so what will be get printed here is 1 comma 1 if suppose my array is having two elements 1 and 2 then how it will get printed is first it will print it as 1 comma 1 then it will print it as 1 comma 2 then it will take the next element it will print it as 2 comma 1 then 2 comma 2 so number of times the basic operation print is performed as 4 right the input is 2 it is performed 4 times so you have a increase as double quadratic time increase so what is our takeaway is see the first column represents your input size how your uh, based on your input how this order get increases it is very explicit that there is no impact of input size when it is a constant time operation and there is a linear increase in our second example and there is a quadratic increase in your third example uh, so our understanding is when you have lower order of growth like your constant operation and linear operation it is good for your larger input when you have higher order of growth like quadratic exponential uh, it is impractical to apply it for your larger data set now do you agree that algorithms running time depends not only on input size but also on the specific of a particular input yes we have seen one example linear search here we will just recall it here i want to search for the element target in the array now not only the size of the array determines the result how the values are arranged in the um, array also have a great impact if suppose this target element is found as a first element in the array <coughs> the running time will be order of 1 if suppose it is find as the last element or the element is not available in the array then it takes it has to traverse the entire array if suppose it is on any other position say the middle or before the middle or after the middle then it is represented as the theta big o notation is used to represent your worst case scenario Uh, which gives you the upper bound on the running time of your algorithm if suppose i want to say a function t of n which is representing the time complexity of a given algorithm is said to be in order of g of n 
then you want to prove that t of n is less than or equal to c of g of n. Uh, that is always your t of n should be less than your c of g of n. For this you want to find two things. One is what is the starting point from which this condition will be true. That is t of n will be less than your c of g of n. You have to find the starting point and the scaling factor c. This scaling factor c tells how um, how faster your g of n grows along with your t of n. Let us prove with an example. If I want to prove t of n 100 n plus 5 is in Bico of n square what I want to find? I want to find two things. One is the c value for this g of n function and from where it begins that is what what should be the n naught your c should be a positive constant again your n naught should also be a positive integer but you have complete independence over the selection of this constant value and it does depend on your application we let us look at this with an example see i have taken n values from 1 to 6 and correspondingly calculated the values for t of n and g of n. To calculate g of n, currently I have given the constant value as 101. If this is the case, uh, when n is 1 and constant is 101, um, your t of n value is not less than, it is greater than. So I want to reset my starting position. So when the constant is 101. One. I have resetted the starting point n0 as 2. See from here. If no, but if I want this n0 to uh, my starting point to be 1, then I have to change my constant. Let me change it to some other value. What, what happens if it is 103? Again it is. So let me try it for 105. In this case, it is equal to t of n. My condition gets satisfied. So that is what you have complete independence over the selection of your n naught and c value. The next we are going to look at omega notation which is your best case. That is it gives you the lower bound that is the minimum amount of time that your algorithm will take to run on the given input. If I want to prove that t of n is in the in g of n then I want to find a C of G of N and this value should be, yes, this value should be less than T of N. In other words, your T of N should be greater than, your T of N should be greater than or equal to C into G of N. As in your previous example, you need to find your starting point N naught as well as the constant C. Again, here it is, you have complete independence. For this example, I have taken t of n as n cube and retained the same n square but here I am going to find it for omega. Now here in the best case scenario, I want to prove t of n should be greater right. So when I take c constant as 1, even from n naught, this condition will be holded. Even, uh, even if I put n as 0 you will have the values to be equal. So from n naught you can hold it true. The next is your theta notation which is meant for your average. Here you want to prove that if you are saying that function t of n is in uh, theta of g of n then you have to prove that this theta n value will be always less than your c1 of g of n and greater than your c2 of g of n. That for here you have to find three things the starting point n naught and constant c1 and c2. Here is an example. I want to prove the given function t of n represented by 3n square plus 5n plus 1 <coughs> can be denoted by theta of n square. In such case I have represented c1 as 4 and c2 as 
half or 1.5. Now when I set my n0 as 1, right? See, I, even when n0 as 1, the condition gets true. Here t of n value is 1 and this is greater than c2 of g of n and it is less than c1 into g of n, right? So, on a whole, we have seen three notations, big O notation, omega notation and theta notation. Big O is used to represent the first case where always your function that is your t of n should be less than the c of g of n. You just ignore the cases before n naught in all the things that is your starting point. In your uh, um, <coughs> best in your best case that is when you use omega in your best case always your t of n should be greater than c of g of n and for your average case theta it should be between your c1 and c2 of g of n now for this this are the references i have referred to prepare the slide and thank you